Hello, inhabitants of Internet Earth. It's your favorite shop dwelling Sarah here with another truck review. And today I have the 2022 Infiniti QX80. It is the luxury version of one of the world's best body on frame V8 powered SUVs, I feel, which is the Nissan Patrol, which we don't get here in America. We get the Nissan Armada. It's very similar. And this is the bougie version of it. Today, I'm gonna get it up on the lift. We're gonna nerd out on the tech specs, see how this body on frame V8 powered SUV is constructed, and then take it out in the dirt and see how it does. All right, this is a big truck, and that is the wrong color full size spare. It's a different wheel, that doesn't really help. Uh, this one does have the tow package, but it's hidden underneath a little cover right there. This thing will tow over 8,000 pounds. That's pretty impressive for this many kilograms. Nissan Futaba. The muffler is painted black, a little downturn on it, and it's stainless. It's painted stainless above and beyond. The QX80 utilizes a double wishbone rear suspension. No solid axle back here, sorry, but it does make for a more comfortable on-road ride. It has the R246 differential, which has a brake actuated LSD and a 2.94 final drive ratio. All the suspension components back here are painted steel, nothing aluminum. Super durable stuff though, like really rugged components. If you look right through this rear wishbone, you can see it does have an air bladder right here because this has an auto leveling rear suspension. This rear diff is pretty stout. You can see right here it bolts up to the subframe. If you're familiar with Toyota and Lexus's KDSS kinetic dynamic suspension system that they have on some of their body on frame SUVs, Infiniti Nissan also has something similar but kind of different because this is a double wishbone rear suspension. You'll notice there is no massive rear anti sway bar back here like you see on KDSS. The HBMC hydraulic body movement control has a system where it does just as it sounds. It uses hydraulic pressure to control body movement, allow for more off-road or less and reduce body roll on-road. Holy shiitake mushrooms. This is a big muffler. Jeez, Nissan Futaba. It's not calsonic like you have on some of their cars. <laughs> The QX80 is built on Nissan's F Alpha platform, which is shared with things such as the Nissan Titan, the Armada, and the Nissan Patrol globally. And this QX80 in particular weighs in at 6,180 pounds, or approximately 9,000 cucumbers. I don't know if that's actually accurate or not. Well, that's kind of weird. There's like a little pattern design in the bottom of the fuel tank. Like it looks like water or liquid or something. I don't think that's on purpose, but that's kind of interesting. As you can see, the frame is fully boxed. It has these weird little ridgy doodads right here. That's kind of interesting. But what I like is it gives you adequate space to put a jack pad when you're lifting this thing. Thank you, Nissan. Made my life easy. The cross members are removable right here under your transfer case in the back of the transmission. Up above my head is a fairly beefy transfer case, and this is equipped with a full-time four-wheel drive system, much like the large body-on-frame Lexus it competes against. There is multiple modes that I'm gonna get to in a little bit when we take this thing off-road, but when this thing is fully locked up, it gives you a perfect 50-50 torque distribution from front to rear. There's all kinds of braces up here at this cross member. This is a stout frame. Everything is boxed, even this cross member is boxed. Paired to that transfer case is the RE-01-7R Bravo, seven speed automatic transmission from Jatco. Ease of maintenance wise, it actually doesn't look too bad under here. There's plenty of room. Both of these front and rear cross members are removable. You can see the front drive shaft right here and then the transmission pan, which is nicely protected by these two cross members. And that's actually it's a pretty beefy transmission pan in itself. Up front, everything's pretty easy to get to too. You can see a steering rack and this is the R180 front diff if you're familiar with Nissan differentials. And the oil pan right here hangs down just a little bit below this cross member and there's no skid plate protecting it. You do have a skid plate right here though. Again, up front, double wishbone front suspension. That is a fat 
and coil over. Look at the size of that. It's like a gourd of some sort diameter. I'm getting hungry. And if you noticed earlier when I was showing that cross member, all these little holes cut into it, well, this little union block goes to some hydraulic lines that are in here that run up the side of the frame rail and go to the top of the damper. It's time for the braking test. This is gonna suck. <laughs> Snowing behind me. Okay, ready? Jeez! Oh, <laughs> oh man! It, it took, an, uh, I don't know what to say. It wasn't a short distance. That braking was just accomplished with a set of 13.8 inch front rotors or 350 and a half millimeter with a fairly beefy set of two piston front calipers. Around them though, on this sensory package is a set of 22 inch wheels. It's a 22 by eight with a positive 30 millimeter offset to be exact. And they're wrapped in a 275 Bridgestone Dueler HT tire, which isn't really an off-road tire at all. It's got a little bit of meat in the center, but it's pretty much a ball cruising tire. So it's got that hairy carpet inner fender liner. Well, it's kind of a pain to get mud out of. Out back, you have another 13.8 inch or 350 and a half millimeter rotor with a single pot caliper and the rear wheel and tire, same as the front. In the name of science, it is now time to give it the beans. Bolstering check. This doesn't have really any bolstering. They're pretty seats. They're comfortable. They're ventilated and heated. Heated steering wheel. Lots of tech in here. Are you heated back there? Yep. Rear seats are heated as well. This thing has got TVs in the back of each headrest. USB, HDMI, folds. What is, what is that? Headphones? Jeez. This thing comes with dual headphones. Spoiled. Manually fold this. Oh, that's pretty easy. Super thick, soft carpet. Oh, geez. Even being five foot 11 sitting in the third row, my knees don't even touch the second row in front of me. As far as modes and things go, I do have some controls down here, but this is just for towing and snow, as well as the four wheel drive, which we're gonna get to in a little bit. I do have a traction control button. I can disable that, but it's full-time four wheel drive. So I don't think this thing's gonna break all four tires loose. I can also slap the stock over and use it like a sequential. All right, give this thing a little assistance and let it eat. Ready? Go. Ooh, that was aggressive. Yeah. Sounds so good. It's quick. For how heavy this is, that's good. Yeah, this thing's pretty quick. <laughs> this is not a light vehicle and it gets up and goes. Big pop. Things like a dinosaur or a rhino or something. It's got a weird head to it. Hood struts and it's all painted. Under the hood of this 2022 Infiniti QX80 is Nissan's VK56 VD. It is a 5.6 liter four cam naturally aspirated direct injected V8 that produces 400 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 413 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. Aww. The engine cover is held on with hardware. You can't just pop it off. Oh wait, yeah, you can. There you go. Now you can take a look at the engine. So under the engine cover, you can see it does have a plastic plenum. Pretty good looking engine. Plastic valve covers as well. I mean, that's a benefit for reducing heat soak. Uh, the hardware is nice that it is actual 10 mil bolts because let's face it, popper doodles crack and break over time. So 
It's a little bit more durable of a design. Digging in a little bit deeper on this VK56, it is part of a family of three V8s from Nissan, the VK45, the VK50, and then this what we get in North America in our trucks, the VK56. It has a 98 by 92 millimeter bore and stroke, does have a forged crank and employs Nissan's VVEL, which stands for Variable Valve Event Lift. I almost said variable valve timing, it's just like a habit, which means it has both variable valve timing on intake and exhaust. I'm looking down here on the side of the engine. Oh, well, these are the frame rail is actually pretty far over there. There's quite a bit of room on the side. The exhaust manifolds would be a pain to get to. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. Over here on the driver's side, the air box is absolutely enormous on this thing. You remove that though, and I mean, it's fairly typical as far as space goes ease of access for stuff. What's interesting is if you look at the front of the intake plenum right there, the engine does sit fairly far back. I mean, it's like the two thirds of the wheel right here back. The fact that there was an engineer at Nissan though that decided to use a captured bolt for this engine cover shows that there is some attention to detail when it comes to doing maintenance on this thing in the future. Make sure I start this by hand. It'd be really easy to strip hardware underneath here. Whoa, scratch shield. Use only approved refinished materials. That's nice. All right, let's take this thing off road. Let's get straight to the point. This is an off road review. This is an off road area, and I'm gonna do some off road things. I'm starting with this hill climb. I don't know how well this is gonna do. This is equipped with 22 inch wheels and the front fascia and running boards are gonna greatly limit this thing's approach, departure, and breakover angles. It's 21 degrees for approach, 22 for departure, and 21 breakover, and it's got 9.2 inches of ground clearance. I do have the full-time four-wheel drive down here though, and uh, I wanna put it in, just cause of the tires that are on here, I'm gonna put it to four low. I am not going to let any air out of the tires. I'm leaving it at the factory inflated pressure because I don't do that to any vehicle I review. It's just cheating if I do it to this one. Already it's getting angry. The like stability system is really not liking this. Not on these tires. It gets pretty steep there in the middle. I don't want to risk bopping this thing on the door. I'm pretty sure I would have made it up that, but there's a pretty deep ravine in the middle, and if I slide down into that, I could destroy the running board or the door. This truck would do it. Absolutely do it. It's just wrong tires on this thing. I'll give this thing a little bit of a redemption. I've never done this hill before, but it doesn't have any crazy deviations in it, so let's see. What we'll do with this. Ah, off road cams. Nice. Sonar beeps. Oh, this is a steep one. Yeah, this is a really steep one. Oh, come on. Seriously? These tires are not off-road worthy. 22 is not really recommended for off-roading at stock tire pressure. I know if you own one of these and you're watching this right now, you're probably a little bit let down that I didn't finish that hill climb, but yeah, realize this isn't my rig and this thing doesn't have the correct tires on it for that kind of a hill climb. So I'm giving you a real world average person's approach at this thing's capabilities versus putting it in a specific tailored environment with a professional off-roader to highlight its capabilities when the average person probably won't be able to do that. Now I'm gonna yeet this thing around a little rally special stage because that makes sense to do with an 80 something thousand dollar luxury SUV. But I just wanna see how this handles. So leave it in four auto, and go. Oh yeah, lots of grip even with these crappy street tires off road. The stability control does not like me doing this whatsoever. It is angry. It lets the ass end get out a little sideways though. Super comfy suspension. It is really soft off-road, even just kind of like thrashing it around like this. 
Okay, I think that's enough. Nobody that buys one of these is gonna do that kind of stuff. So as far as the normal people driving goes, on the road, this thing's super comfortable and is really nice in here. New for 2022, they redid the infotainment system in the center console and it looks good. The navigation allows you to zoom so far out that you can actually see stars in outer space and remind yourself what planet you're on. Some people need that reminder every now and then. There's a little joystick down here in the center to control it with or you can tap the screen. I like that they give you this day night button right here so you can switch it on the go without having to go into the menu system. That's really nice. I like that it's got this little cubby down there for your wireless phone charger. That's kind of cute. Nice materials all throughout. The dark wood is absolutely gorgeous looking. The Bose sound system in here was a little lackluster. I was a little disappointed by it. Fuel economy wise, it's not that great, but it's still got a NAV8. And if you're looking for one of those, sometimes you should not worry about your cake and just enjoy it. If you guys never seen one of my vehicle reviews before, I have multiple categories on the fringe of making any sense whatsoever to rate and assess them. Starting with the bean score is a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get behind your belly button when you give it the beans. And this 2022 QX80 is getting a rating of... This thing's actually pretty quick. It's surprising. I'm a big fan of this VK56 engine. Uh, next is the cookie score as an assessment on a one to five scale based on what you get for what you spend. And this sensory trim level of the QX80 at just a hair under $88,000 is getting a rating of... This is a lot of money right here. And yeah, some of its competitors are just as expensive, but that doesn't make it any more valuable. It just, that's a lot of money for this type of vehicle. And on the used market, these are an absolute bargain, I feel. So moving on, next is the meatball score. It's assessment on a one to five scale based on a vehicle's off-road ability to tackle rocks that are round, like meatballs are round. And the QX80 is getting a rating of 2.2 meatballs. This one's just equipped with the wrong options to do any serious off-roading. The piece of machinery itself here though, I think is fairly capable. You put the right wheel and tire setup on here. And I did do some research. There is some companies that make lift kits for these as well. Next is the mechanic score. It's assessment on a one to five scale based on how difficult something would be to maintain. Five being easy, one being a nightmare. And the QX80 Sensory is getting a rating of it's a body on frame V8 SUV that's been around for a while. That is a good recipe right there. However, if you want the one that's probably the easiest to maintain over a longer period of time, I would go for the Armada with very little options added to it. Lastly is the Penguin Score. is assessment on a one to five scale based on how much I personally like something. And this rig right here is getting a rating of I liked it a little bit more than I thought I was going to. I knew it was going to be good because I am a fan of the VK56 V8 and Nissan V8s in general. And uh, I've always been a fan of the Nissan Patrol in its past iterations. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.